seems almost obligatory this time of year to write a column about giving. Pressures to give, give, and give some more are absolutely everywhere we look. Ads are just to buy everything from sweaters to screwdrivers to SUVs on the grounds that they'll be the perfect gifts to delight our loved ones. Charities send out solicitation letters. Angel tree displays in malls and bell ringers in front of stores. Hope we'll share some of our shopping dollars with those less fortunate. All of it can be really quite overwhelming. We all have our own con unconscious beliefs about giving. Uh, we call these money scripts. And in addition to that, we're surrounded by beliefs that our society and religions have given us about giving. Both the personal and societal beliefs can really run across a broad spectrum. For example, there's money scripts like, it's better to give than receive. At this time of the year, good people help the needy. You have so much that you have an obligation to share. We'll try this one. Giving takes away people's initiative to take care of themselves. Another one is, if poor people weren't so lazy, they provide for their own kids at Christmas. And how about, there are plenty of agencies to take care of those who need help. I think that was one of Mr. Scrooge's. Like all money scripts, all of these contain partial truths. Giving, whether to family members or to charity, is not a simple black and white issue. Some of the questions that it raises might include, how do you know whether you are helping people or enabling them to avoid helping themselves? How do you give to children without encouraging them to be greedy or feel entitled to the latest and greatest of everything? And how do you balance helping others and taking care of yourself? One often overlooked factor is whether the giving is done more to help the recipient or to help the donor feel better. Let me give you an example. I remember being in a church group one evening when people were discussing giving. Two of the women there, uh, many years earlier, when they were struggling single moms with young children, had experienced people from a charity coming to their doors with gift boxes of presents and food for Christmas dinner. Both of them had been humiliated and mortified rather than pleased and grateful. The well-intentioned gifts had felt like a judgment that they weren't capable of taking care of their own families. No one had asked first whether they wanted or needed any help. Giving can sometimes be an attempt to hold on to people, to make up for someone's past failings or to be loved by them. Now, one common example of this is divorced parents who often overspend on gifts for their children. Public giving may be a way to look good or to gain acceptance or recognition in the community. Now, one way to respond to the complicated issue of giving is simply just avoid it. You can close your wallet completely out of fear that you'll be taken advantage of or fear that you'll offend or just simple frustration of it all. Another response is to try and give to every charity that asks and to spend yourself into debt by buying lavish gifts for everyone you care about. Nah, now, neither of those makes a lot of sense. Like many other of life's decisions, the question of how to give and how much to give and to whom to give is a very personal individual matter. There isn't a formula for doing that right. The only suggestion I have is that you give as consciously as possible. Consider the beliefs behind your giving. Discuss giving and receiving with your spouse and your kids. Stop and think before you decide to give or not to give then you're more likely to give wisely with thoughtful compassion.